Hi, thanks for joining me for today's SOLIDWORKS simulation tutorial. I'll, I'll be uh, putting together a series of tutorials that will help us understand how to better analyze symmetric or, ax in this case, axisymmetric or revolve type parts when using SOLIDWORKS simulation. There are some challenges that you can run into, uh, particularly when trying to restrain your models. So in this example, I have a, a fairly simple revolved part and you can see using a I've used a live section plane here so you can take a look at what the profile of this part looks like basically just a revolved part uh, we have a uh, um a little groove cut out on the inside and in parts like this uh, in like a downhole application oil field application typically the, uh, the the stress situation would be due to an internal pressure of some kind so we would like to analyze this part for a thousand psi of internal pressure the trick comes into how we restrain the model uh, so that it, it um, represents the true physical operating condition and at the same time limits any kind of rigid body motion. So let's begin by creating a simulation study. This will just be a static study so you could do this analysis just with SOLIDWORKS Premium. Uh, no additional simulation modules would be required. I'll take the default name uh, study 1. Now in our analysis manager tree I can see right away that the material has been assigned to the part. There's a green check mark there and I can see the 304 steel has been assigned by virtue of the SOLIDWORKS part model. We still need to add our fixtures also called restraints uh, and our loads. For the loads I'm going to go ahead and go into the uh, pressure load and I'm just going to select the internal faces. Now here's a little shortcut. If you have any tangentially continuous faces, you can just right click on a face and choose select tangency and that will grab all of those continuous tangent faces. And that's a, a slick way that I can get all of those interior faces all at once. Let's change my units and I'll enter in a thousand PSI. I like to key in the value and then hit the tab key and that, that's how I know it locks into that field. Hit the check mark to OK that and I'm also going to need to apply my fixtures. Now how we restrain this model, I'm going to have some discussion on that, that in uh, this video and then the subsequent videos, but what I'll see a lot of users do a lot of times is just pick an arbitrary face and apply a fixed restraint. So for example we can come in and choose a fixed restraint on this end face. Now when we choose the fixed restraint that means that all three coordinate directions X, Y, and Z are getting restrained. So the part would not be able to translate in the X or the axial direction and it would not be able to slide or translate in the Y, Z direction. That means um, the part can't rotate and it also can't expand radially on that face. Uh, that might be a little bit too restrictive. We'll have to see how things run out. Let's go in and create a mesh. Usually for my first pass, I like to accept the default mesh settings. I'm going to turn on the standard measure as opposed to the curvature based measure uh, and just take the standard mesh size. That'll give me a good idea. If the model solves with the standard mesh, I can always come back and refine the mesh to get a more accurate solution, but this will at least let me know if I'm in the ballpark. So with my standard mesh, it's, it's a fairly coarse mesh but uh, it'll probably work for just getting a feel for how the part's behaving. Now let's run the solution. Because it is a fairly coarse mesh, this should run in just a matter of a few seconds. Now when SOLIDWORKS finishes the solution, by default it displays the first plot that you've specified in, in your preferences. So here we have a von Mises stress plot. You can see that it's displaying in a very exaggerated form. Uh, and, and that's uh, the default behavior is to exaggerate the deformation scale so that we can see uh, kind of as a visual sanity check is what I call it we can see how the part is deforming even though it's exaggerated um, we can see is it deforming the correct way so for example if if I were to see the part compressing even though I had applied an internal pressure load I would know that something was wrong here I can tell that the part is trying to expand which is what I would expect from that pressure load now if we look at the stress contours we can see that there's some uh, not well developed banding of stresses meaning some some kind of localized high stresses here at the at the edge of that face that we restrained the stresses are on the order of about 74 megapascals but elsewhere in the model it looks like the stresses are are quite a bit lower like in this region here for example where it's kind of a lime green color probably in the neighborhood of high 40s so what, how can we explain why we have the very high stresses out here on the edge? Well, if you look at how the model is deforming, 
remember that we took this end face and it put a fixed restraint on that. So that end face is not allowed to deform at all. Now, whether or not that's reality, uh, I think you could probably argue that it'd be pretty difficult to restrain this collar in that fashion to where this end face just can't move radially at all. So the high stresses are a result of what I would call an artificially st stiff restraint. That is, we're, the, we're modeling the part artificially stiffer than it really would be. In reality, it can probably relax radially, it can expand radially, and that would cause some of those high stresses there to be lower. So in this case, the, the way the model is restrained is affecting the results in this local region. So you either have to kind of explain that away and say, well, these stress results here, this 75 megapascals, that's not really a real result. That's just a byproduct of the, uh, of the restraint and say that you know the rest of the model is behaving as we would expect. Or we have to figure out a better way to model that restraint that represents the true operating condition. And that's what we'll tackle in the next series of videos.